Hi YouTube, this is Tinka OES Lady. I'm trying to make a video for our last video of the school year update. I think that the last thing I mentioned was that we were doing a standardized test. We did get that done. However, um, we had death in the family again, and so it took um, a little bit longer to get everything done. So we're um, finished with the school year, um, but I'm just a little bit behind with getting all of our documents in. Um, one thing I'd like to say about BJU Press, which is where I signed up to do the Stanford Achievement Test, which was one of the tests that was um, approved by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, originally, they told me that it would only take about 10 days to receive the results back, and that was not the case. I still have not received the test back, and we finished up the testing at the end of May. I think the latest um, was like May, maybe June 1st or something like that, but then that is exactly when we had death in the family. Um, I had a deadline that I had to get them in by no later than the 12th, and I had it in like maybe 10 days before that, and I still don't have it. So I don't know if they still um, honor their deadline of June 12th, but which, you know, they sent me the test in um, the end of April, something like that. And I'm like, who holds on to test that long? That doesn't seem, you know, fair even for people to have the test in their possession that long. Anywho, I received an email stating that next year you have to, um, you can't test just your kids. You have to test at least two other children with your kids. Now that's going to be tricky. That's going to put a glitch in the system. I think every year, if I'm not mistaken, I've listened to other homeschoolers, there's always something that comes up just to make things a little bit more difficult to do this and what we need to do is um, be aware of these changes in the law and um, you know try to get together especially if you're in a place like the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and try to get parents together whether they're homeschooling or not and try to fight some of these changes that is going to be made uh, make it difficult for you to homeschool your children. Um, there was one case here in Pennsylvania where um, a parent was required to do not an end of the year evaluation but a mid-year evaluation and they were told this at the time that they sent in their objectives and their declaration and affidavit in the beginning of the school year that sure you can you can teach everything is fine but I am requiring, this is from the office of the superintendent for whatever county she was in, I don't believe it's Philadelphia, but it was like maybe Bucks County or something, but you will have to do an evaluation mid-year. Well, at mid-year, um, I don't know, you, you haven't had any tests done, um, you may have some grades, you may have some things that you have done, but not a lot to put in that packet that they really want. What they want at the end of the year is standardized test scores if it was a year that they required them. I'm going to do it every year, but Pennsylvania only requires it for, I believe, 3rd, 5th, 8th, and maybe one other grade, maybe 10th. Um, so I'm just going to do it every year anyway. Um, and you need your attendance and you need your uh, portfolio of some sort, um, some, some kind of uh, folder or something that you can show just um, some of the work that you have done. Now, also you have to get a person to evaluate your work. The person that evaluates your work has to have taught before, either secondary or primary school, depending on what um, years that you're needing it for. And they also need to um, have interviewed your child and seen your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically they're going to um, come and talk with your kids. Um, 
I guess they decide what they what they want to ask. Um, there is no, I don't think that there's a guide for them to use from the district. And um, then they fill out a form. I made out my own form because the, the district did send me a sample of what they were looking for, and it was one page. When I got done with mine, it was two pages. And it was only because I just added um, all the subjects and just room for if they wanted, the evaluator wanted to make like a comment. Um, and then I'm also going to type up my own evaluation. Um, more so just to put in the portfolio. I don't care if the district really cares about it. I, the bottom line is my portfolio is never making it down to the district. So all that work I've been doing, really they don't want to see that. They just want somebody else to look at it, like a deputy, and say, yeah, they're doing the work. It looks like they were working every day. It looks like they're making um, suitable progress. They don't care if they're making A's, B's, or C's, or if they're um, mastering anything. Just looks like you know the work was getting um, gradually harder as the year went by and that they were attending school every day. That's that's the bottom line. The school district here in Pennsylvania, they have a lot of rules, a lot of red tape, but what they're asking for in the way of quantity and quality and um, substance is not very high, which is why my kids are not in the school district here in the first place. Uh, it doesn't mean that um, a lot of kids do not come out of the system and do very well because it takes a certain mindset you know to get through the system here I'm not saying that kids don't graduate here and do well it's uh, probably about five or six colleges right here in Philadelphia so I mean these kids are going to college I mean because they know what of, of college we have Temple down the street we have Drexel we have LaSalle we have Villanova we have University of Penn and so on and so forth all right here. I mean, I can get to any one of those in like 10 minutes from my house, not to mention the private schools like um, St. Joe's and Immaculata and all these other schools. So, anywho, I just wanted to give that brief update. We're done. We're done for the year. We had a great year. Um, the kids are happy that we're done. We have a few plans for the summer. We're going to the shore for a week at the end of the summer to finish off our summer. The kids are at camp at the YMCA. Um, looks like they're not going today because it's 8.30. <laughs> and I'm making a video and they're still asleep. Um, no biggie because tomorrow's the 4th and I think they're closed. So that's where we are. One thing I am adding is one extra student next year. I got Malcolm. Malcolm turned four in May, you guys. If anybody ever saw Malcolm, he's four now. And I really, really, really want to have some things for him to do next year. I don't really want to be very structured with him. I just want it to be stuff that he actually will sit down and do without me pressuring him. That's the kind of year I want for him next year. It's not important to me at four that he's able to read chapter books and etc. because truth be told, by the time all kids are you know, eight or nine, unless, you know, the school system has failed them or someone else has failed them, they all end up reading at the basic same level. They can all read. I'm not going to say same level, but they can all read. Everybody learns to read, just like everybody learns to walk. So, um, anyway, this is Tinka, and um, this is just my brief update. Thank you. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I want to also say thank you to all my new subscribers I'm trying to get around to do thank yous as much as possible today. I had some technical difficulties. Still am. I'm not even sure if this video is going to be able to upload. I got two videos yesterday that YouTube is still saying is pending. And so I'm really, really, really concerned. Thank you.